Welcome to the broadcast, everybody. Today, we are headed back up to some familiar territory in Marshall, North Carolina to do a little bit more work on uh, Fallon's little farm. I don't know if you guys looked back and saw the video. Uh, we did a lot of burning for him and cleaning up brush, fixed his driveway. Done a lot of work for him. He's been a great customer. be doing a little bit of forestry mulching for him with the excavator. I probably won't film too much of that uh, just because we just did a video on it. And, uh, just won't take a break from that because I don't think it's that interesting to watch. You guys comment if you do want to see more of it. Uh, but the big thing on this job will be we've got to cut a couple of roads up to the top of the mountain that runs up from the low country of his farm there and also the uh, neighbors put a driveway in and they turned the culvert perpendicular to the road I'm sure to save on how much pipe they needed to buy because if you had just dropped the pipe into the creek and run the road across it it would have probably took 30 or 40 feet of pipe and when you're doing a five or six foot pipe they're, they're pretty expensive but uh, by not doing that and turning the pipe per perpendicular when the water goes to run into the pipe it runs in at an angle instead of straight into it and it's backing water up and when it rains heavy it's flooding across their road and then Two, when it's not flooding, when it's being redirected through that pipe away from its original natural path, it's driving it into the creek bank and doing some pretty bad erosion. So we'll do an initial video of the damage that it's done and uh, why you don't do that. You know, I mean, really, somebody could get sued over something like that. But, you know, our, our customer being a good guy, he's just going to have us do a redirect, which we're going to use the uh, big concrete retaining wall style blocks, and we're going to slowly curve the creek back to its original path, and then we're going to backfill with creek material. The state knows that we've been doing this kind of work, and... Uh, they're okay with everything we're doing so we'll be digging in the creek a little bit getting the river stone on the back side of the wall but we're going to be careful not to dig below the creek bed stirring up silt we're just going to dig that top foot or so that uh, doesn't really contain silt so we'll, we'll be doing it the right way and not do any damage down the stream get to digging into loose dirt and stuff around the stream and you notice your water's getting muddy uh, that's silt and it can you know kill fish it can hurt the wildlife so you got to be sure that you're doing right if you're unfamiliar with doing something you know call somebody you know or if anything else if, if it's a job you just know you don't have the knowledge to do it you know call up somebody Make sure they know what they're doing and then just sub it out to them or give them the job and in return for a little finder's fee. And then you can check on your job, you know, even though somebody else is doing it and learn from them. So we're going to ride on up to Marshall, North Carolina, get OVL or fueled up and ready to work. Got about three solid weeks. January, so uh, we'll make some things happen. Hopefully, some good things. Alright, just quick down on what we're doing here. Here's one problem area. I'm not positive we'll fix this this time, but we've already run the mulcher out through there just to clean that up a little bit. But you can see here in this part of the creek that the creek has moved from over there 
to right here and you see how it's swirling around it's undermining that bank so that'll be one thing we have to fix but our first first focus here i'm gonna mulch all these trees in this whole corner of stuff and uh, get it to where we can access that corner of the creek as well to uh, redirect it
pieces of machinery, but it comes down to picking the right machine for your needs. So it really help you and bring your attention to some things if you're searching for a piece of equipment yourself. Uh, I'm not actively looking for anything. We got everything we need for my little business, but I still watch this series, you know. something that uh, or kind of the occasion arrives for a new piece of equipment. So we've been fortunate we don't need anything right now. Uh, so yeah go check his channel out. It's dirt perfect again. And he's his channel is absolutely blown up. I don't even know when he started it. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't start it like a year ago, maybe. But he's, I remember when he just had a few hundred subs, and he's over 22,000 now, I think. So he's done great. I'm really happy for him. Uh, another one to give a shout out to would be Let's Dig. Chris uh, Gens, I think is how he pronounces it. Maybe a log. It 
some point got washed into it. This down here was a man-made problem. That's clear. Uh, but we're going to fix a couple of them. Otherwise, it's just going to keep eroding. Of their work is 
fix failing systems. Look how far that stick just went. That's a hundred feet. A little stick too. Not much mass, so that tells you if it'll sling something, it don't weigh that much. If it gets hold of something heavy, it's really gonna sling it. I like doing parking paths, you know, little graveling projects. That that's fun for me. And I've learned I'm only 36 years old, but it did, it only took me that long to learn that if I would just do the kinds of work I enjoyed, life is, is great. You know, being stuck doing work that you don't like or you dread going to work.
looking for is I'm watching the front of my tracks and as they roll over, if I see mud start plowing up on it, you know, you know you're starting to get into something soft and you better take your time because a lot of times around these creeks, there's like little underground springs that run to them. Get close to creek banks, they're bad for it. Uh, one thing you can do is track forward and then back up. And you can see that we're only sinking maybe a half inch. So we're good here. And that's one thing I'm going to do uh, my channel based on is while I operate on all these jobs, I'm going to talk about what I'm looking for, what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. But every job is different. Every situation is different. And Eventually, I'll get, I even I'll get myself into a bad situation. I'll put my blade down to stabilize so you see how the machine's not bouncing as bad. Again, this is only a 20,000 pound machine, so it's not as stable as, say, a 30 or 40,000 pound machine. That's the main reason they put these blades on here, it's not to backfill or push dirt, it's stabilizing yourself. You'll use it to stabilize yourself more than you'll use it for this fish dirt. I can promise you that. This machine we're using here today uh, is the Bio 80. I think it's a 19,500 pound machine without the additional counterweight. The counterweight I had added on to this one, I believe is an 800 pound weight. It makes this a totally different machine. I know one. I got. I just recently got a new subscriber, and he just bought a eight. And I plan on sending some work his way. He's he's pretty. Uh, he's just outside of the range that I usually operate. So we'll be sending some work his way. Uh, give a shout out to my buddy Dalton. I promise I'm gonna call you, buddy. He's up in Kentucky and looking to start his own thing so I'm going to help him out try to get him some work I like you know doing some sub work I had a couple of bad experiences this past summer with subs actually on this property here um, but you know that's one of our services is we, we try to find good contractors and weed the bad ones out for our customers. That way if you know one of our previous customers that had me working on a job wants something done that I don't know how to do or I don't offer, then I've got a good contractor ready for them. And that's a good way for you guys starting out to keep your head above water too, you know. Some some work out, charge, you know, five, ten percent. So whatever your sub quotes to you to do the job for you just to add a few bucks on to it and that'll help now we're getting closer and closer to this edge and I got flowing water just about a foot below grade from where I'm at now quicksand is really not a big, big problem up here. Our, our soil is more topsoil or clay. But when you get in a spot in a bottom like this, you can see as I was rocking, I'm down to about three inches deep. So what it is is water settles down below, but as you vibrate and move around, it starts working its way up towards you. And next thing you know, you bust through. And I'd have a hard time getting out of a mud hole with this head just because there's not really anything good to grab with. Sorry about the flare, I know it's terrible. Yeah, I got sidetracked. Alton, I'm going to call you, buddy. I'm going to try to call you this evening. So hopefully by the time this video comes out, I will have already talked to you and we'll have got you going. I love the idea of helping people helping people get their start. This is a great economy. If somebody's going to start right now is the time. So 
I'm getting all this cleared, one thing I'm being mindful of is like right here, there's a little bit of debris that got accumulated from me mulching. So I'm letting my head slow down. i probably use this tree right here to slow myself down a little bit more. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab this debris out just to kind of avoid damming. through there right there's that first bend uh we'll walk over here and give y'all an eye on what we're gonna do here you can see that at some point that creek ran over there and some for some reason it's jumped it's coming around through here and it's undermining this creek we're gonna take all that cobble right there and bigger stones and there's a bunch of bigger rocks that I can rake up just with the teeth. And we're going to pile them in this corner and dig this out and reestablish that creek. Instead of it curving, it's just going to go straight. So we've checked on it. Everything's good as far as that goes. This is that corner we went into. It's just kind of rough looking. We wanted to mow it down so he could see the lay of his land. It's pretty interesting, actually. This looks like it was dug out man-made. So there may have been an old barn or something down here. I enjoy speculating on why something is the way it is. And as I was mulching out through here, you know, here's an old bottle. Don't even have the wrapper on it. A couple of old bottles. But you can see, and they've told me that this floods out and this bottom will be underwater and they've got a bunch of rocks piled up here and i think that was piled up that's man-made to stop that from eroding because you can see this low area here is where when this whole thing floods i'm suspecting that this rock is catching that water and it's undermining way up under there and it's wet under looking under there right now so I'm telling you, I, I love being out here in this environment because I'm like, how'd that rock get there? Something that big, you know, how the earth developed and everything. I'm suspecting that somebody with a machine has taken these two rocks and blocked that creek to stop it from coming over here. But I think the issue is when it floods, water comes in this whole area here and slams into this cove and starts swirling. In which case, those are ineffective. So let's walk up top here and I'll show you what I've done. All right, so same story. This whole area was saplings and briars and, uh, you know, just bramble type stuff. So we just went through and mowed it down. I could go over this a couple of more times and chop it up real fine, but I don't think that's really the goal we're wanting here. I think he's going to use this as a holding area for animals at some point in which case they'll get in here and pick around and clean this up especially if he does sheep or goats cleaned up this little corner these tree limbs coming off of this guy were out to here you can see where i cut them off and mulched them back cleaned that up we moved this bush back that was coming out about halfway into this little road so we cut it about 
halfway. Now to be proactive, this is the little creek that I was talking about us eventually maybe doing a crossing for him. And what I do is I look and see what size pipe they're using right there. And I believe that is a 24 inch pipe. So that tells me that if that's good enough for the state, then we would be safest to just go ahead and do a 24 down there as well. So that's, that's how I plan ahead and how I decide what size pipe to put in a ditch line somewhere. I'll walk up the ditch line and there's, you'll always run into a pipe or something to hint you off to how big of a pipe you need to use. So just walk up the road, follow the ditch line. And when you get to that next pipe, look around and see if you see evidence of water bypassing it or overflowing it. And if you've got room in the ditch, if the ditch is big enough and you just want to cover yourself, go, you know, six inches bigger than the next pipe upstream. So that's just a little tidbit there. Um, and that kind of goes over what we're going to do tomorrow. We're going to jump over here and clean that up. So uh, hopefully I'll get this video out tonight. It's going to, we got about an hour drive home since I'm driving the dump truck. And uh, hopefully I can get this video out. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. And uh, I'd sure like to see you guys follow me on the next one. Like, comment, and if you want to see this hillbilly jabber and clean up some land, be sure that you subscribe and hit the little bell next to the subscribe button so you'll get the notification. Otherwise, let's see, was it Dirt Perfect, Elite Earthworks, and uh, let's dig. Go check them out. You won't regret it. You guys have a great day, and we'll see you on the next one.